Welcome to the Autodesk Fusion 360, what's new for July. In this release, Fusion 360 introduces a range of new features and improvements that will improve your workflows. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting your design journey, these updates are designed to enhance your productivity and unleash your creativity. Let's start off with a few general improvements common to all workspaces. We're excited to offer native support for Apple Silicon, specifically M1 and M2 processors. Users will benefit from a 30% performance increase across all areas, notably in compute performance and local rendering, and see up to a 50% reduction in battery consumption. Although Rosetta 2 installation is still required, the dependency on it has been significantly lessened. Fusion 360 also now supports native trackpad functionality improving ease of use on any Mac OS. Originally, Fusion 360 used a custom trackpad engine to process canvas gestures, but now leverages native trackpad driver capabilities, providing a more stable canvas navigation experience with consistent registration of pan, zoom, and orbit commands. We're introducing advanced filtering capabilities as well, right on the home screen allowing you to sift through your projects effortlessly by file type or date modified. What's more, we've made sample files accessible directly from the home screen. We're excited to introduce a significant improvement in Fusion 360 preferences. Previously, accessing the electronic workspace in Fusion 360 required navigating through multiple clicks from the design workspace. This update lets you select your preferred document upon launching Fusion 360. By choosing electronic design as your preference, Fusion 360 will launch directly into the electronics workspace, saving you valuable time and eliminating confusion. Additionally, when creating a new document, you can select the document type from the context menu, providing a better design experience. The Fusion 360 electronics editor provides easy workflows to map 3D models to your footprints. We understand there could be instances where specific components, such as logos, manufacturing notations, or test points, do not require a 3D model representation. We have introduced new options to disable 3D models for these assets to make the process more straightforward and persistent. While editing the footprint of a component, you now have the choice to deselect the Use Placeholder option when there is no associated 3D model. This lets you quickly indicate that a specific asset does not require a 3D model, ensuring clarity in your design. The process of importing Eagle design and library files into Fusion 360 has previously presented challenges, potentially leading to the loss of a link between the design and the library. Similarly, the link can be severed when design files are shared with you through exported designs. Our development team has introduced a new option called Swap Library in the latest update. This valuable feature makes associating your designs and libraries easier with minimal effort. By simply selecting the option within the design file or library workspace, the system will search among the current active libraries and propose the most suitable matches for the swap. This new command will make it easier to synchronize your libraries and imported designs, ultimately enhancing efficiency in working within your designs. When working on the schematic, you must run your electrical rule checks, ERC, to check for consistency between your PCB and schematic. This process helps detect undesired connection errors, such as mixing digital and power connections to a single node. The new ERC panel will list warnings indicating if connections like power discrepancies, missing values, or unconnected pins. In the PCB workspace, we now have the DRC error panel, which functions similarly to the error panel in the schematic. This panel lets you view and address errors that don't meet your manufacturing design goal checks. By highlighting any item on the list, you'll receive the location of the offense. Streamlining DRC into a panel ensures ease of accessibility, allowing you to address these errors and warnings early in the design cycle. Polygon pores play a crucial role in PCB design, facilitating efficient distribution of power and ground planes while minimizing voltage drops and noise. 
They also contribute to effective thermal management by offering a larger copper area for heat dissipation, enhancing the overall performance and reliability of electronic circuitry. In this update, we have introduced a significant improvement in naming polygons, making the process easier and more convenient. With the new autocomplete feature, you can quickly assign names to your polygons, saving valuable time. When sharing your design with others for reference or use in other applications, it's crucial to provide output options that are as accurate as possible. One of the most common file formats for sharing designs is DXF, the Drawing Exchange Format. In this update, we have introduced a new option to enhance the accuracy of DXF output. Now, when exporting your designs as a DXF file, you can include the origin of the components, represented by a small crosshair. By having this origin point, the resulting DXF file will better represent your design when imported into other applications. In the simulation realm, we've added the center of mass for deformed bodies. Now, you can visualize where the center of mass will be for your part under load or post-loading. This enhancement is automatically added through inspect and supports multiple bodies. Enhanced inertia relief is a feature that widens the applicability of inertial relief alongside various manufacturing methods. The inertia relief studies now support unrestrictive, additive, 2-axis cutting, 2.5-axis milling, 3-axis milling, and 5-axis milling manufacturing methods. We're excited to share a significant performance updates to Fusion 360, bringing an overall improvement of 30% across all workflows. For large assemblies, we've seen specific workflows showing performance enhancements of over 90%. These include operations such as extrude, create drawings, showing all bodies, drawing get latest, and isolating components. Our technical team has made impressive strides with component traversal specifically, a process that previously took up to a minute. It now operates in less than one second. Specific to the design workspace, we have a few exciting new features. Duplicate with joints significantly improves your assembly workflow efficiency. Duplicating sub-assemblies and joints is quick and straightforward. When you select components to duplicate under the Assemble tab, their associated joints are also copied. Both the copied components and joints appear separately in the timeline, allowing independent modifications with no link between copies. The standard copy command doesn't copy joints, and capture positions aren't duplicated. Embossed functionality has been enhanced with complex surface support, expanding the range of surfaces that it can handle. This improvement particularly aids embossing surfaces like spheres, donuts, or doubly curved faces. The emboss feature cannot be applied to surface bodies or forms. The bodies must be solid. The mesh creation tool for volumetric lattices has been made more practical for everyone. Now, you can select individual faces of the mesh body for secondary operations. This is an automatic addition to the Create Mesh tool, where faces are intelligently grouped based on the original body. This is especially beneficial for adding support material in 3D printing. Drawings also saw a couple nifty new updates. Our shaded view improvements enhance the visual clarity of your designs. This enhancement sharpens the shaded view, ensuring that models with a mix of long, thin, and thick parts won't appear tessellated when zooming in. Users can now flip the position of dimension arrows, enabling clearer, tidier drawings for accurate interpretation. Access this feature by right-clicking a dimension and choosing Flip Arrows, or find it under the Dimension drop-down on the toolbar. This feature can also be applied to multiple dimensions simultaneously. The Properties Anywhere functionality enables the use of properties and parameters in various text interfaces. You can now place model properties and model parameters into any text field on your drawing, making it simpler to add model properties and parameter information when creating or editing leaders, text, custom tables, or dimensions. Our right-click improvement significantly reduces the number of clicks required in the drawing environment. Previously, you had to select an object on a drawing before you could right-click on it. Now, with this update, you can right-click directly on views, dimensions, title blocks, and more for immediate editing. 
As a top tip, remember we added the ability to open the model directly from a drawing view last September, making this process even simpler now. The manufacturing workspace has seen quite a few enhancements as well. Let's start by looking at some of the new additive features. Fused filament fabrication printers use a known filament diameter for printing. In the past, this value was part of the print settings dialog, meaning that if you had multiple extruders, you could not use two different sizes of filament. The filament diameter selection is now part of the machine definition allowing you to select a single or multi-extruder. Set the filament diameter for each, define the volume per second, extruding temperature, and fan enablement for each extruder. Additionally, another improvement around the machine visibility has been added, giving you control of the visibility of the platform after the toolpath has been generated from within the toolpath simulation dialog. To better understand the energy consumption, material usage, and cost of printing your part, a calculator has been added to the print statistics dialog. By inputting your energy and filament costs, you can now predict how much material and energy you will use, as well as their cost. Geometry selections was introduced back in January. With that, toolpath extensions were moved from the individual toolpaths to the geometry selections, allowing for greater accuracy of the toolpath preview. This has been enhanced to allow for multiple contours to be selected and changes to be made globally across them, simplifying the process of defining your toolpath. Transition feed rates have now been added to milling tools, allowing for optimization of toolpaths and cycle time reduction. For verification, you can visualize this new feed rate in both the toolpath simulation as well as in the show toolpath data dialog. Face turning now has additional control of the cutting direction. From the Passes tab, you can define the direction to cut to be outside to inside or inside to outside, giving you a more consistent burr and better surface quality results. When profile finishing with general tools, there is a new option to machine undercuts. Previously, these tools would only be able to enter the undercut area at the same angle as the trailing edge of the insert. This new option allows for the area to be machined. For safety, a clearance value can be defined for either the back of the insert or the holder. Five access capabilities continue to be expanded, more toolpath strategies receiving additional tool access controls. Blend, Flow, and Flow Preview all had the option to use Lead Lean as a primary tool access with all milling tool types, but now also have To and From a Point or a Curve option added. However, these particular options are restricted to spherical tools only. Additionally, Blend, Flow, and Flow Preview previously only supported minimum and maximum tilt options but those limits were always defined relative to the toolpath orientation z-axis. These now can be expressed relative to the WCS z-axis. Multi-axis contour also now has the ability to use automatic collision avoidance when using a vertical primary tool axis and additional avoidance options with the use of spherical tools. The ability to limit and generate three access specific toolpaths from within the multi access contour strategy have been added as well. The smoothing option in the trace and flow strategies now allow arc fitting where it can maintain the toolpath tolerance, helping machines that prefer arcs over linearized points. Moving on to preview features, the blend strategy has a new option and two new toolpaths that have been added. A new way to define blend toolpaths is now available. This new method produces toolpaths that avoid fragmentation on complex geometries, enabling them to easily be machined to a quality surface finish. To select the new method, choose from the tip of tool option for step over calculation on the passes page, which considers the cutting geometry of the tool when calculating the step over. The new geodesic toolpath strategy generates three, four, and five access toolpaths from selected drive surfaces in either a scallop or blend style with the added ability to machine undercuts. The scallop style creates offsets from a variety of user-defined open or closed curves, and the blend style blends the offsets between two user-defined curves. Advanced Swarf is a new strategy as well to preview. Similar to the current Swarf toolpath, where the side of the tool is used for machining a surface, 
but with greater flexibility in how the geometry is input and additional options on how it is machined. And that's everything for this release video. Thanks for watching this update, and don't forget to check out the blog post to learn about what else is new in Autodesk Fusion 360.